Hey creeps, it's Cameron again, and welcome back to Library Macabre. Today, I'm gonna to be speaking about one of my absolute favorite movies of all time. Not just my favorite horror film, but one of my favorite movies in general. That is the 1980s classic, Fright Night, written and directed by Tom Holland, as well as its movie novelization, written by Craig Spector and John Skip. Fright Night is not only a horror classic, but I feel one of the great teen movies of the 80s. If John Hughes ever directed a horror film, I believe the outcome would probably be something like Fright Night. It has all of the humor, all of the awkward teen situations, and it has that perfect cinematic 80s style. For those who have somehow never seen Fright Night before, this movie follows a teenage boy named Charlie Brewster, and he has a new neighbor, one that he believes is a vampire. That's pretty much all you have to know about this movie. It is an incredibly simple setup, but it takes that setup and runs with it and just makes for a very, very fun film. This film is also a love letter to all of those horror movie hosts from back in the day. So in this movie, we have the show Fright Night, which is hosted by Peter Vincent, the great vampire killer, and he's played by the amazing Roddy McDowell. Charlie Brewster is a big fan of Fright Night and is a big horror nerd, so that's why his mom and his friends don't really believe him when he starts saying, oh, the neighbor is a vampire. So Charlie has to prove this somehow to his mom and his friends, and all the while he is being, of course, stalked by the vampire next door. Who knows that Charlie knows? The vampire himself, who's played by Chris Sarandon, is named Jerry, of all things. And he is a very modern vampire. He's very attractive, he's very sleek, and funny, and witty. And that's how he, of course, lures in his victims. Jerry is one of my favorite on-screen vampires. I just love how Chris plays the part. He is very funny in the role, but he does it in a way that's not over the top at all, so he still seems intimidating and scary. In fact, he has a way of portraying this humor while still being scary and intimidating at the same time. It's just really good. It is just one of those purely entertaining, satisfying films with great cinematography, great music. I just, I love it. I love it. I have the really, really nice Blu-ray set from Eureka. That's a company out of the UK and it's made to look like a VHS when really it is a Blu-ray. Actually, my Blu-ray is still in the Blu-ray player because I'm watching the special features. And it's got postcards and a poster and all of that fun stuff. I don't know if this is out of print or not. I got this from Zavi. I think it was a Zavi exclusive. If this is sold out, you can still get the regular Blu-ray, which is still really nice. So yeah, there's Fright Night from 1985. And of course, back in the day, whenever a hit movie was released to theaters, there was always a novelization. So of course there was a novelization of Fright Night. This is written by John Skip, Craig Spector, who are mostly known now for their splatterpunk books, but I believe this was actually the first book they ever wrote together. If you like Fright Night the movie, you owe it to yourself to read this book. It is just as good as Fright Night in my opinion. It is pretty much identical to the film in every way. It just adds a little bit more depth, gives you a little bit more back history of the characters, especially what's going on in Charlie's head as he's trying to figure out what the hell to do about the whole vampire situation. It actually is pretty tense and there are some moments in this book that were so well written and that really surprised me because yeah, it's a pulpy book, but Skip and Spectre are really good writers and they know how to write a tightly paced book. So much so that I listened to the audiobook of this in one sitting. I was at work uh, listening to it. Usually when I'm listening to an audiobook, I have to, uh, after listening for an hour or two, I have to go and listen to some music or listen to another audiobook or watch a video or something just to break it up because I start losing focus on the story and my mind drifts. That never happened. Not a single time. I listened to the entire, I think it's five hours long. I listened to the entire five hour long audiobook without even stopping. Now that's actually one of the awesome things I wanted to talk about is that this book has been out of print for years and years. You have not been able to find a copy anywhere unless you go to a used bookstore and get really, really lucky. It's a rare book and it's very expensive online. I was fortunate enough to find a copy in a used bookstore for a couple of dollars. 
that never happens. I was really shocked to find this, but you don't have to struggle to find a copy of this book anymore because it is now back in print thanks to Encyclopocalypse. You can get this book in a brand new paperback edition as well as ebook and audiobook. I listened to the audiobook because uh, Psychopocalypse was very kind and sent me a copy for review. So if you enjoy Fright Night as a movie, I really think you're going to enjoy Fright Night as a book. Uh, I think the only things I will say about this that some people might not appreciate is that there is quite a bit in the way of objectification of women. So just be aware of that going in. This is a book from the 80s. It's just something you have to expect when you're reading vintage horror. But overall, I just thought this book was so much fun, just as fun as the movie, and I think fans of the film owe it to themselves to read the book. So that is my book slash movie review of the 1985 cult classic, Fright Night. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe if you wanna see more videos from me. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Later, creeps.